Hi uh, guys, today I'm gonna do a small uh, demo of uh, Brew Retro uh, version 1.3. This one adds port for the Virtual Boy. So like uh, all the other uh, Brew Retro, uh, you can always just make a, a small uh, adapter like this that you can just uh, use to plug uh, directly uh, into your console without any uh, modification uh, to the console so this one is a bit special because since the virtual boy used the controller as the power input so in your uh, blue retro cable you need to add uh, a power input uh, and the switch uh, to put it on but this is documented uh, in the cable building uh, wiki page but another uh, cool Cool thing to do with Blue Retro is to actually consoleize your virtual boy. So this is one that I have built. So it includes the uh, Blue Retro inside. Let's make a, a quick demo. So actually, the Nintendo 64 Switch controller is perfect for Virtual Boy because you have actually have uh, the C button that you can use at the right uh, D-pad. So let's make a small demo. So right now uh, in my consoleized virtual boy, I'm using a uh, FurTech uh, virtual tap. As you can see. It's really an uh, awesome way to play Virtual Boy. Also a nice thing since this is consoleized, so uh, Blue Retro has uh, direct access to the to the uh, Virtual Tap uh, button, so you can actually change the palette color directly from the wireless controller. So you could also, uh, not only the palette button, you could also use Blue Retro uh, uh, for the uh, display mode uh, button to choose between full uh, of quad uh, mode of the virtual tap but well, in my case I instead hook it up to a, to a switch uh, on the back so I'm not really good at red alert so as I said uh, the Nintendo 64 pad is very good because uh, like in this game you can use it to, uh, to strive So that's it for the demo. Let's take a look uh, inside my console eyes uh, virtual boy. I'll just remove the game. On OK. Like this. So just before I take it apart uh, at the top, I have the, the connector. And then uh, at the front, I have the power switch. And then the button for uh, the ESP uh, boot button. So that's the button uh, Blue Retro used to kick out controller or enable the uh, pairing mode. And then I also put the virtual tap palette button at the front. And then on the back, uh, so I'm using a uh, virtual tap, uh, the 15 uh, kilohertz uh, RGB version. But even then, uh, I'm still using a VGA port because uh, all my setup I'm using an uh, extra uh, MVX switcher, so that's just easier for me to use. And then uh, for the same reason, I'm using a TRS connector here to hook up the audio. And then here you have the virtual tap uh, uh, display mode uh, switch between uh, the regular mode quad versus uh, full mode. And then finally, I'm using a uh, Barrett jack for the power input. So that's 5.5 uh, uh, millimeter uh, outer, uh, and also uh, the inner size is uh, I think it's a 2.1 millimeter. So it's uh, the same thing uh, as a Famicom, but in this case, uh, the power cable I'm using uh, it's uh, the center pin is positive. So so it's actually I'm using those. Uh, power supply for all my uh, retro consoles, so I have a lot of uh, adapter for my Famicom, Jaguar and uh, Genesis uh, to use all the same uh, connector. So this is a, 
9 volt power supply with uh, 3 amp power. So let's uh, take it apart. Okay, so let's start uh, at the back uh, near the input uh, power. So here I have the barrel jack. As I said, uh, the center pin is positive. And then it goes right to into uh, a diode. So that's a, a 5400 uh, diode. So there's rated 3 amp. So, so when you use barrel jack, it's always important to have a uh, a diode in series so that uh, in case you use uh, the wrong adapter uh, it doesn't fry your system because you are never know when the wired uh, Famicom power supply is gonna ruin your day <laughs> and then uh, I was going to the front switch so the front switch is just a single pole a single throw switch uh, that include a, a LED so the LED that's uh, connected here actually is the Blue Retro uh, statue LED. So when you power it up at boot, uh, it's gonna glow. Uh, so that's the glow to say that Blue Retro is in a, a pairing mode. And then when the controller is connected, it's gonna shut off. And then. Uh, Island down there you have the ESP32 for Blue Retro so that's I'm just using a regular uh, Dev Kit C board from uh, Expressive so the way it's the power it's uh, so both both the ESP and the uh, and the virtual board the virtual boy uh, main board they both receive uh, 9 volts directly so even though the the label on the input pin for the ESP32 it's 5 volt but if you check the spec of the LDO it can actually take uh, up to uh, 18 volt so so to just uh, maximize the uh, power available to the ESP I just connected directly to the to the 9 volt input so it doesn't have to doesn't put any load on the virtual boy uh, on power supply. Uh, so then you have pretty much uh, on the side here you have the one of my uh, the, the level shifter board that I usually use in the uh, in inside of the of my uh, DB25 uh, uh, cable to put the level shifter in there so I just use uh, the same board here so for the virtual boy uh, virtual boy is 5 volt so you need to use a, a level shifter because the ESP32 uh, is not a 5 volt uh, tolerant so it might work without it but uh, just don't uh, just uh, just use a level shifter to to be on the safe side and uh, and then the virtual boy is uh, the same protocol as the SNES and uh, NES so uh, it's just uh, three uh, three channels so you have uh, two input uh, the latch and the clock and then you have one output which is the the data which carry the the button status uh, so that's it and then you have the boot button uh, switch for the sp32 and then that's the pallet uh, button so this goes directly to the virtual tab down here but also it's, it's also connected to the esp32 so that's why you can switch the palette uh, when when using the controller. So virtual tap it's uh, it's using internally uh, a 3.3 volt. So you don't need to to use a level shifter for this line. So you can hook it up directly to uh, the SP32 to the virtual tap. And then in the corner here you have the virtual boy uh, amp board for the audio. So I didn't uh, uh, do much uh, with that board. I just removed uh, 
the speaker connector to just make it easier to mount on the side here so I just have a, a TRS connector going there to the back one so I didn't try to mount it directly to the back uh, would have been a bit of a pain so using a screw connector like this is much easier since you just have to drill a, a round hole so I'm just so this is just a straight pass through no? there's nothing uh, funky happening here and then uh, so that's pretty much it for the right side of the unit and then on the left uh, you have obviously uh, Furtec uh, virtual tap so the one I got uh, it's not uh, the original one it's uh, from Rondo so the only issue I had with it is that the flex cable it's uh, it fit perfectly on the virtual boy side of the main board but uh, to actually plug it on the virtual tap it was a bit uh, a little bit too large so you could get it in uh, kind of uh, diagonally and it would still work but I didn't like that so what I did to make it uh, fit perfectly in the connector I had to shave about like half a millimeter on one side of the flex cable with uh, a very uh, precise uh, exacto knife and then after that uh, it did fit uh, perfectly uh, in the connector so this yeah this is hooked up to a VGA connector so as I said I'm using the RGBS uh, variant here because my setup uh, I'm using extra switch and then you also have here the video mode uh, switch for the virtual tap and then uh, down here you have also Furtec uh, servo uh, emulator and then here you have the main connector where the power and brewery tool comes to the virtual boy so I actually made uh, my own uh, connector here so those connector uh, all the virtual boy connector are not using the regular uh, uh, dot one inch pitch actually they use uh, two millimeter pitch connectors so you have a I think the company is uh, G GSW uh, that's making the PH series connector so those connectors are a perfect uh, match for uh, the input uh, controller input and power input uh, connector so so I didn't have a 13 pin one unfortunately uh, it's out of stock at DGK so what uh, I had on N however a 10 pin version but since we uh, in my case I don't need the, the link cable the, to be populated uh, I'm not planning to to do multiplayer, so I'm just you can just use a six pin connector, and it's gonna work. You just have to be careful to make sure that your nine volt input is lined up correctly on the on the first pin. But other than that, uh, using a smaller connector uh, is not an issue. And then you have obviously in the middle the main board. Uh, to make it fit, uh, I had to relocate uh, all the the big uh, true hole uh, components. So we have the three cap on each corner, and you also have the DC DC uh, converter that I had to relocate on the back. So this one is a bit hard to disorder. So even if you use uh, a chip quick to uh, unsolder it, uh, it's kind of uh, very tight. In the in the in the hole of the motherboard, so you have to eat it and then quickly uh, shake it out uh, of the of the motherboard before. Uh, but uh, with chip quick, it's not a big issue. Uh, it stay uh, it stay molten uh, for quite long time uh, when you eat it uh, properly. So that's about it uh, for my console is uh, virtual boy. So. Uh, I'm going to show you a small uh, time lapse of uh, the building. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.